Okay, guys, so uh, he's here now, Taylor Essex. How are you doing in, um, obviously, these very um, testing times at the moment for everybody? Um, how are you, how's things and life going for Taylor Essex currently? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's okay. I'm, I'm trying to make the best of it, I feel. I've got, um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably in a better position than some people, so that's probably the best way to look at it and try and keep positive, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, uh, it's like strange times, man. I mean, um, everybody's doing different things. Um, a lot of the, you know, wrestling network that I'm kind of like know and chat to all the time, they're all kind of like, um, they've all just basically either really hardcore working out, like at home, trying to make the best, like adapting to stuff, um, indoors with their workout plans, or other people have just oh, been, yeah. other people have just been like super creative with like, you know, booking stuff out in advance and trying to come up with new characters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, I just think you've got to find things to do. That's that's the thing. I mean, um, you know, it's uh, it's difficult because there is no time scale to anything. But um, it's 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 one of those unprecedented things that we've we've never had to endure before in in this sort of generation, isn't it? So, so well, definitely. Like, yeah, I was just saying, like, when talking about working out, I'd say. I'm probably worked out more like, yeah. in the most consistent recently in the last couple of weeks, um, even in the build up to this. I think that just because of, you know, just wanting to get in shape anyway, but like, especially the past week, there's been nothing to do. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah like people, I'm lucky enough, I've got some stuff here, but there are people I've seen using um, like old brooms handles to make uh, bars and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. People are being very creative at the moment, so yeah, it's all good. Everything's back and everything rips. So yeah, um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, testing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's testing times, buddy. But um, you know, I'm sure. Like I, I keep telling all my listeners on this, like people always emailing me and um, you know things to do, but like. There's there's always stuff to be done and, and you know, my advice to everybody, especially if you're based in the UK, just take the government's advice, stay in as much as possible and just go out for the essentials. Don't go crazy like I've I've been seeing quite a lot of um especially over like social media, you just see like tons of it. And um, you know, just uh just be careful, just be safe and uh, that that's all you can do at this this moment, you know. Um, I know a lot of people have like been like totally complaining that they're too bored and everything else, but it's like at the same time um, they're not asking us to go for war or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's literally stay at home. So um, oh, yeah. you got to judge it up a little bit. You know, we know we know it's serious, but like again, to help this matter, it's only a, a case of literally just uh, staying indoors. So yeah, yeah um, I was saying this to my girlfriend yesterday. I was saying how. In a way, I reckon it'll be there'll be two types of people coming out of this. I feel like people are ever gonna be like, no, I'm gonna take more care of stuff like recycling properly and trying to be a bit more, you know. Like I, I said to her, I was like, mate, people that grow their own food and you know, what I mean, like have chickens in their garden and all this sort of stuff, like they're <laughs> laughing right now. Like this is a breeze for them, but for us, you know, what I mean, for people that take going to the shops, like I must, I tell you, I go to the shops for something like every day, like normal life. Mm-hmm. So this whole thinking ahead and trying to <laughs> that's stay it, that's it. Possible, yeah, it's so hard. So I'd suggest that once we're once it's all back to normal, I want to try my best to be not reliant on so much like external stuff. You know, like just be a bit more even like environmentally friendly and stuff like that. Because I just feel, but then I think, and on the flip side of that, I think other people are just gonna go. Some people go straight back to normal life and just try and forget this ever happened. Yeah, yeah so. no, you're you're spot on there. I think you're absolutely right. You know, I think it, I think it will it it will change like a lot of people, like you just said, like their perception coming out of this of like valuing things differently, like putting things into perspective a lot more. But like you say, there'll be another half that will just be like straight back to normality, and uh, that's it. You know, like as as normally those people are the ones that you'll find that not very good at adapting to change in general. And they'll just want yeah. to get straight back into their comfort zone, and uh, kind of it'll be a, a hopefully a thing of the past. But yeah, it's 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 um, it's, it's fascinating times like that. And I'm, um, I know that we're like digressing somewhat from wrestling, but you know, obviously this is in the the news. So it's really hard not to be talking about this stuff. But what's what fascinates me personally is like 
you reading all these um articles and stuff about like um employers like laying off people and it's like all of a sudden you find that what your organization is all about in one hit when stuff like that yeah. happens in these times and also you know it's 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 it works the other way as well where like the employer maybe like they have employees that like maybe go that extra mile or don't or try and like you know you could th- there's two ways about it but it's been it, i mean some of this stuff that you read about is pretty crazy and it's it's quite i mean i feel for those people that you know have literally just been like let go and that's it you just fend for yourself because it's very difficult then to like suggest to people you must stay at home when you can't put bread on the table you know what i mean so um that that's got to be tough um for those people i would say yeah it's like um yeah i know a few people jobs fair enough they get their like um they get their basic like like, like tips and stuff mm-hmm. like, um people work in restaurants and that then yeah fair enough they're getting 80 percent of their basic wage covered mm-hmm. but when you think about it sometimes if they're really good and on a good weekend you can do just as much in tips as you do hourly yeah so you're already losing half your income and then an extra 20 percent on top of that yeah really. yeah so there's like 80, it's not like a true 80 percent you're getting yeah and then again even when you do have money he goes to the shop I went there yesterday and it was crazy like, there's nothing left there was hardly anything there like when I said that I was like oh then I'll go get some I'll get dinners for the next few days and it wasn't even the fact that I could plan anything I was like let me buy what I can get and then we'll have to put stuff together at home so grab them food you know what I mean like, but yeah like party like, food there people, there def- yeah I don't want to be like moaning about it because there are people definitely worse off than me at the moment so yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, yeah. But you know, um, I, you know, I'm going to mention this because it was really nice. And um, my, so I basically, I was working like a full time gig, and then, but I was only doing like three days a week. So I had these like extra two days available to me. So literally, it was like a week before this stuff sort of kicked off. I just started a new job as um, as like a coordinator up in London for a, for a care service, basically. And basically, I'm just in front of a screen. That's all I do. I just, I just have a screen in front of me. I just do check-ins and stuff like that. But um, like this boss of this place, unbelievable. She literally started to pay all her carers fifteen percent more on top of what they were getting, just to show like appreciation. The fact that they were going out there, they were still doing their rounds, you know, flying about all over the place. Um, obviously, I wasn't like. You know, I wasn't entitled to that, but that was fine because, like, I don't, I'm not like on the floor as such. I'm not the one sort of like going yeah. into people's homes, so there's no problems with that. But you know what? On top of that, I found out a couple of days ago that she'd gone round to li- like literally gave everybody hampers of like all okay. the essentials, and uh, this is like I'm talking about 115 staff, and literally went round to each of their homes, left it on their doorstep with like a personal letter um from her to them to say thank you and i was like wow that is that's crazy that's crazy do you know what i mean it's unheard of um as far as like a leader but like i'm thinking to myself like she's done it for me as well and i'm thinking to myself like we all feel now like we would probably bat bat for this woman no matter what do you know what i mean like you would you'd go out for this woman for war for her now do you know what i mean if she asked you to but so um yeah i mean like there's there's positive there's like really positive sides to people and then um there's sort of really negative but i I really think you find out who who in these organizations like are really good at being leaders and who aren't because you know i've been in places before and like hr or directors service managers whatever like one little drop of snow comes out and that's it they don't come in but they expect yeah. they expect their staff to do it uh stuff that they wouldn't do do you know what i mean but yeah i was blown away by this so i thought you know i should definitely mention that because i know that she she often tunes into my podcast so i, I wanted her to know that um she won't oh, want me to say the name but like yeah yeah not enough people though yeah. I, I tell you that yeah. but uh, I have a story the opposite version of that <laughs> but, uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, literally, it's just my brother's work has just been a really eye opener of how franchise owners can just be like, don't care. Mm. You know, they act as if like yeah. the essentials of this, uh, the essentials of this whole crisis is like, you know, food, toilet roll, and like 
pizza. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even open closing, they're still. But yeah, no, like you said, you need more people like that. So that's yeah, that's the way forward you want to be. So hopefully this doesn't. And like you said, like again, when they're all done with this, you'll see people that have done this and done well mm-hmm. and made things better for people, and they'll get rewarded. That like they'll get rewarded when it's all. Yeah, you know, they should get rewarded. And yeah. then vice versa, people that haven't been, it will be like I open this to certain companies that just don't care. So. Yeah. No, that's it, man. I mean, um, you know, hopefully you, you expect like people to come more together in these times, but like you always get the ones that aren't. Um, like I, I saw this, um, a guy posted this video up and it was like an old lady was trying to, you know, like hand sanitizer. They're selling it now. They're knocking this stuff out for like seven yeah. quid a pop. Unbelievable. Like seven pounds for a small, um, you know, like thing like that. Anyway, this this old woman, she goes up to the counter. She's literally just got a fiver on her, and the guy's not gonna like just knock two quid off of it. Like she can barely afford this bread that she's getting, and the guy just refuses to give it to her. Um, and like she's proper like elderly. You can tell that in this video. So anyway, this other guy just comes along. He's bought like six of the things. He gives her two, and then basically just like rips into this store owner. Who, by the way, like, this is another thing I've noticed. I don't know whether you have. I don't know if this is a common trend. Maybe my listeners can tell me in the UK. But, like, um, smaller stores or, like, yeah, small stores are basically, they've got, like, Tesco's branded, like, toilet roll. And they're selling it for, like, I don't know, triple the price or whatever. I was like, legally, can they do that? Like, that's unbelievable. I, I see something you're supposed to report that. Yeah, I mean... Uh, legally proper tires of yeah, the yeah. pandemic, I guess. So. Uh, I'm bl- yeah, like, I haven't seen anything like that, to be fair, because I've only been going to supermarkets. Yeah. But you're saying, like, trying to find some humour in it. Like, yesterday, I reached to grab some apples, and literally this 70-year-old woman must have... I've never seen a 70-year-old woman literally, like, run off, it sort of looked like, because <laughs> of the whole two metres apart thing. Yeah. And she... Uh, she literally saw some old lady run away from me yesterday, so... <laughs> yeah no you're right um so anyway let's let's like digress i know like most of our listeners would try and uh you know they'll they'll be tuning in for a, to try and digress away from all this like uh, everybody's yeah, trying to do <laughs> but um but uh, yeah, I mean, let's start. Let's start with something obviously very much in the, in the media and press at the moment. What is your thoughts as a wrestler yourself, uh, Taylor, in the fact that like WWE have decided to, you know, go ahead? Okay, no crowd involved, but they're going to go ahead. I believe they've taped like a majority of the matches already last week at the Performance Center, and maybe there's more to come. Yeah. But the fact that they're gonna, they're still gonna present this. They're gonna do it over two nights now instead. Um, I thought maybe they'd cut the card and just have like I don't know, eight matches, and you know like the old WrestleManias used to be where it was just like the best of the best used to get on. But to my surprise, they are still going pretty big, and I think there's like fifteen, sixteen matches that are like coming our way, and I'm thinking. 16 matches all presented in in that fashion. I know there's going to be a few gimmicky type matches in there, but I'm yeah. wondering, I'm thinking to myself, is this, how is this going to feel and look? Um, to, you know, I know, I mean, it's commendable on one hand that they still want to do this. They still want to give entertainment to all the fans. And I don't think I'd have much of a problem with it if 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 this wasn't WrestleMania. But the fact this is WrestleMania pay per view, if it was another pay per view, I think I could I could understand it a little better. But the fact it's WrestleMania, you've gone from stadium arenas for the last fifteen years to having eighty thousand people, you know, ninety thousand people, to nobody's going to be out there. Um, what's your take on it, and how do you feel? First of all, like from a wrestler's perspective, and then like as a fan. Um, like, yeah, as a, from a wrestler, I'm sort of feel like at least the guys, people will get in work. Obviously, they're all really rich anyway, so that's not yeah. But, um, <laughs> you have to worry about that. They, they still get to wrestle. But, um, I don't know. It's an odd one because, I, I'm just honest, I haven't watched any of the no-crowd stuff, like, at all, um, so far. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Men så har jag inte mer att säga i min hela mitt kontor.